Welcome back, Legends. I hope you're all amazing. Let's take a look at this brand new public beta release for the FM3. This adds almost everything that the Axe FX3 and FM9 has gotten in terms of updates recently. There's the new amp modeling updates, compressor block updates, there's new effect types for the flanger, multi tap delay, and plex delay. You've got improvements to the tape preamp types in the cab block. You've got the global speaker impedance curve you can set. You've got the output one mute option if you want to use this as your main interface and use plugins. You've got the new FAS buttery amp modeling. There are improvements to the reverb CPU usage on this, which is going to be really big for a lot of people. I think the only thing that it doesn't add are the improvements to the virtual capo that the FM9 got and those new shimmer reverb algorithms. But I'll show you some stuff that the Plex Delay block has gotten if you want to do the shimmery thing. So maybe let's get started with a little jam. I've got my Strat in E flat. I'm going to use the new FAS buttery amp model together with the new Maxoff 808 drive. Let's play some Stevie Ray or attempt to play some Stevie Ray. <laughs> It's a guitar faces on 11 type of tone for me. So thank you for indulging me right there. Let's take a look at some more stuff. I've got the band commander at stock settings now. And let's just start here with this cab block preamp type modeling. And if you want that extra little bit of secret source on a kind of cleaner or grittier tone or a vintage style tone, this is a great place to do that. And basically what this is emulating is like a studio style setup. So once you've mic'd up your cabinet with a microphone and you're gonna run it to a channel strip and maybe run it through a tape deck or something, you know, those old weird reel-to-reel -reel things that made magic happen back in the day, this is all modeled in here. So let's hear this tone with the preamp type disabled and then I'll kick it in with a bit of drive and saturation with that tape 50 US type. <laughs> is just bringing some magic right there. So that's a great one to play around with. And if you've got a clean sound or a gritty tone and you're sort of like, uh, it's a little bit sterile sounding, try one of those tape types in the cab block preamp type. Compressors, let's chuck some comps on here. So with this compressor block update, you've got auto attack and release and auto makeup gain. And you've also got the ability, if you wanna run your compressors like after the amp in cab, you can set the input level to line level. I've got it to instrument at the moment, but let's just hear some of my favorite tones here. So this is the studio feedback compressor. All I've done is turn the ratio up to four. Let's have a listen to what it does to the tone. <laughs> some body and weight to your tone there. Another great one is the JFET compressor. Again, stock settings, I've just turned the compression up to seven. If you want that kind of thick and chewy 
like I didn't realize that I had a compressor on compressor tone, try this one. And I'm just going to bypass this flanger for now as well. So let's check that out. one's awesome when you add something like this Maxoff 808 after it. That's a good stuff right there. Some settings that I stole from the one and only Matt Picone are these Keeley style compression settings using the analog compressor. So attack time is three milliseconds, release time's about 240, ratio's quite high here. And let's hear this one. This one's good for a lot of stuff, but if you really wanna hear the compression on there, and then a good little trick I also stole from Matt is uh, to turn up the input block output level. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, I might just have it ready to go to pump it up by about like six to nine dB and then you can get super squishy. So let's hear that. really really cool pumping that up big time there as well i'll just set that back down to zero and then the last one uh you can tell that i added this flanger block without thinking about all the other scenes but this one is just the dynamic comp and again stock settings but compression up to eight if you like the funky thing try this one <laughs> So there are a bunch of really fun compressors. Let's hear some flanges now. I'm gonna add that drive back in. Maybe actually let's go back to the JFET. JFET, some drive. I'm gonna kick on this Hemis flange. So there is only one chord you're allowed to play with this particular flange and it's this one. <laughs> So that's running it before a clean amp with a little bit of drive. I'm gonna turn the drive off. I'm gonna put the flanger after the amp and here's one I prepared earlier, the Atomica High. I'll turn the compressor off as well, as fun as that is. Let's hear the Hemis flange after the amp. <laughs> the idea that one is really really fun you've got so many new types in here so there's stuff like uh what do we have the starship flanger there's uh where's that spirit flanger i think that one is right here i'll put this one before the amp and while we're butchering rush songs let's try this one i actually am going to add some drive for this one so let's hear the spirit flange at stock settings this one does the <laughs> That 
that's really, really cool. And with these, you know, running them in front of the amp or after the amp is really a matter of taste. You're going to get a much more pronounced effect after the amp, as you can hear there, but it's probably more authentic. You know, if you're going for like a Lifeson thing, like I pretty much always am when I try a flanger like this, probably makes more sense to run it in front of the dirt section, uh, just like they would have done back in the day. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. I'm going to switch guitars. I'm going to switch presets as well. And I want to show off some of my favorite new types in the Plex Delay Block and the Multi-Tap Delay Block as well. So trick number one here is if you go to the Plex Delay Block, which I've connected in parallel, select this detuned space effect type. So look at all these new effect types for one. 44 effect types, this is so awesome. Uh, one thing I think with the Plex Delay Block is that can be a little bit daunting. And if you're not 100% familiar with how it works or you're not really comfortable with dialing it in, uh, you might just turn it on, use it at the stock settings and not get some of the joy you can get out of this. So there's everything from shimmers to kind of small spaces to delays to all sorts of fun in here. So try this, take detune space number two, set the decay time to like 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 seconds, uh, turn the diffusion up and the input diffusion up and add a bit of low cut and high cut. And you get this really awesome, just kind of short, thick reverb to add a bit of space to your dry guitar tone. So I'll go dry and we'll hear it with this one on. <laughs> Yeah, that's really, really nice. So let's take that and let's just use a stock type in the multi-tap delay block, this PCM Circular. This one has been matched to the iconic Lexicon PCM70 Circular Delay, uh, complete with all the weird little quirks of that particular unit. So let's hear this one. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? If you want a kind of split between a reverb and a delay, the echo hall type in the Plex delay, just at sock settings, is going to give you a bit of a reverby thing, a bit of a delay style thing. Check it out. <laughs> That is one thing I really encourage people to do with the FM3 is to make use of the Plex delay and the multi-tap delay block because they can take the space of two or three blocks. You've got this kind of intersection between reverb style things and delay style things and modulation style things. So that's really, really awesome. And I have seen some people who were, you know, disappointed that the pitch block didn't get the exact updated virtual capo of the Axe FX3, but you know, don't worry about the virtual capo, chuck on some big greasy detunes. So this is like nine cents either side. If you've seen my video with the uh, blocks where a friend of mine, Nicholas, shout out to Nicholas, uh, we measured my H3000, my Yamaha SPX, a bunch of other fun stuff, and we got those exact settings in here. So this is the echo hall together with this big greasy detune. <laughs> One thing I really like on the real H3000 as well as this is you just offset the delays in that. And one quirk about the Eventide unit was that uh, the left and right channel delays were never the same in the pitch block. So you get this kind of little offset like 318, 323, and it sounds incredible. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now I did mention earlier that the reverb block doesn't have the same shimmer reverb types as the Axe FX3 and FM9, but try this. Bring up a Plex delay, stock settings. I've just turned the mix up because it's running in parallel here. I'm going to set the bypass mode to mute effects in as well. Go in here and try one of these Econo shimmer modes, and these will instantly give you a glorious shimmery reverb that we all know and love. So I would really encourage people to experiment with all these new types. You know, you could just go type by type until you hear something that you like. Uh, another good example would be, I'm using a totally filthy guitar tone, but if you go into the multi-tap delay block, you know, you've got stuff like the quad chorus as a preset type. So if you, again, I was saying the multi-tap, it's got four channels. So you could have a big panning delay, you could have one of these as like a quad chorus. Let's just hear that. I'll bring the mix up and maybe the input gain down a little bit. Again, we'll go mute effects in. So. Beautiful stuff right there. So you've got a kind of wicked chorus tone in there. You can try this aerosol type if you want like a multi-band flanger. <laughs> Really, really nice stuff. You can use this quad diffuser to get a faux reverb soul tone. And then you've got preset types inspired by multi-head echoes like this stereo shadows. I have switched to a clean sound. This guitar isn't the most appropriate for a clean sound, but check this out. <laughs> The Space Tape is another cool one as well. I'm guessing inspired by something like a Roland Space Echo. I'm back to filth. <laughs> fun about a thousand times in this video already, but these new effect types are fun and hopefully they inspire you all to dive into these blocks that I think offer so much flexibility. You know, if you love delay and reverb and modulation effects, the multi-tap delay and the plex delay, I've also said this a lot, you gotta try them out, do yourself a favor. And now that there's all these preset effect types, I feel like they are far less daunting to just go on in and dive in. So I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks so much for sitting through the entire video. As with any 
fractal beta release. You've got to go to the forum to try this out. Try at your own risk, always do a backup, and hopefully the full release will be out soon if you're somebody who likes to wait for that kind of thing. But I've already gigged this a whole bunch. I've actually been doing a bunch more gigs with my FM3 because we did a fly date at the start of December. And then because I had it all conveniently packaged up and travel ready to go, uh, I pulled the FM9 out and I was noodling around at home with that. And it was just like, oh, I gotta go to a gig. I'll grab the little guy and it's been amazing. So, so cool to see so much of the stuff from the X3 trickle down. Let me know if you have any specific questions or if there are any specific tutorials or tips and tricks you would like me to cover in the future. I hope you all have a fantastic day. If you wanna support the channel directly, links to my Patreon and the music I make in the video description. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. <laughs>